Hello and welcome to Wave Support. I see from your clinical request that your patient is struggling with some movement on these uh, rigid multifocal lenses. Well, if we look at the designs for a moment, we'll start with the right eye. And if we look with just a general comment um, about the topographies, one of the things that I find I have to be a bit careful with when it is when I open up Wave design software, I have to watch very carefully this lower right picture uh, in the lower right hand of the wave screen. If you remember that, it's what wave interprets the corneal topography to look like. When opening the wave software, if you open it and average out the astigmatism or average out the corneal measurements, sometimes you'll get a little misrepresentation of what the cornea looks like. In your case, you can actually see that a little bit, not so much in the right eye, because if you look at that lower right hand corner picture, it's not too much different than your actual topography. However, if you look at the left lens down at the bottom left cornea, you'll see almost like a little uh, corneal astigmatism. But if you look at that right hand lower corner picture down there, you'll notice it almost looks like a spherical cornea. So sometimes that will cause, cause the lenses to be a little misrepresented, misrepresented on the, in, uh, in design. So sometimes that will contribute to some difficulty with the fitting. So with that said, if I'm struggling getting a lens to center uh, well, I generally go back and look at the topography, reopen up the lens, and this time when I import the data, I do not average out the astigmatism. And that usually gives me a little bit more truer representation of the cornea. So uh, now let's talk about the fit itself. This right lens tends to be moving up and down from my understanding. Uh, what, I, what you really want to do is maximize the landing zone. That's the area between the blue and the pink. That's the main landing zone of this lens. If you notice, looking at your lens, if you go through that area, you have a little bit of alignment in this meridian, but as you go around, you feel a lot of fluctuating up and down. So that'll tend to cause a little um, unpredictability as far as the fit goes. So what I, there's two ways to maximize that zone. One is to decrease the back OZ uh, by moving the pink dot and the blue dot to smaller. Uh, the other option is just go larger on the lens, and either either of those two options will give you a little bit larger um, landing zone. Not uh, knowing what this patient previously wore in the gas perm lenses, usually it's safe to go a half millimeter or millimeter larger to start than their habitual lenses. If you're already uh, in that larger zone from the habitual, then your best choice then to do would be to reduce this uh, um, optical zone here. So what I did was I, uh, I have a little sample lens that I mocked up here for the right eye. What I did was I actually took uh, this sample zone, uh, this back surface zone, the back optical zone and shrunk it up a little bit. I actually in this particular design left about the same. You can go a little smaller if you'd like. Uh, maybe go down to about five or so. Five and six. And what I did was just to try to really mimic this cornea. I set it up a free form. And I actually, uh, you'll see what I did here with this uh, in just a moment. I went to free form and let the wave design the lens. And you'll see this back surface of the lens is starting to look a little closer to this topography. And I'm going to put a little of this uh, back surface asphericity in there. I'm going to redesign again and see what we come up with. Okay, so now you get a uh, back surface that looks a lot like that. And if you look at your actual cornea, I can get into the, into the view here, you'll see that this uh, back surface of the lens is very similar to the actual true topography. If you contrast that to your original design, you'll notice you have a little bit of a difference in this uh, left lower uh, representation of the back surface compared to your cornea. So I think that it will help get the lens to center. Now if you look at each meridian, you'll see you have a much nicer alignment through each principal meridian in this landing zone. So that should help this lens center a little bit better. You can also you know, make sure you keep that center thickness a little thicker. I kept it thicker here than uh, the edge thickness, and that'll keep that lens a little heavier, so it keeps it from uh, moving up and down so much. When we look at the left eye, once again, we'll look at your design here. And remember, we've got this lower right-hand corner. It's almost a spherical-looking cornea based on the topography. So I'm guessing what you're ending up with is a lens that is a very nicely designed lens on um, not so perfect uh, corneal data. 
the night photography doc here, um, I think, got hidden by the fact that the average is pretty significant. Once again, you get some uneven landing zone areas here in the different principal meridians as you work through the route. So again, you want to really concentrate on getting this landing zone to line as close to that green line as you can. And so once again, I marked up a lens for it. And this time I, I did not average the corneal signal here. And while you'll see it still isn't a true representation, I think it gives you a little closer match to the true topography than the um, than the original design. So now I went to I went to free form in this one just to try to get it as closely lined up as I could in all the different principal meridians. And you'll notice now when you go through here, I, you've got a very closely aligned lens in that landing zone. That'll keep this lens to probably center a little bit better and probably not uh, rotate and dig in as, as much. So with those couple of hints, hopefully we'll get you back on track with this fit. Again, you can always go larger if you have too much decentration on the lens. Going larger will usually stabilize that for you. Well, I wish you well with this case, and thank you for contacting Wave Support. Thank you, and have a great day.